My name is Martin Richards. I'm a cloud specialist at NetApp, and I'm part of the uh, UK service provider team. Um, and my role really is to uh, work with or partner with service providers and, and help them build the, the storage infrastructure to power their cloud solutions. So as I work with a few key service providers, I've got visibility of the market and what other service providers are doing. And um, with that in mind, Adapt asked me today to, to talk about what makes a great cloud platform. So rather than going straight into the technology, et cetera, what I thought I'd do is put to, um, I've got some business requirements of a, of a cloud solution. And I thought I'd dig into those and then map those onto some, some of the technologies that, that we see and what Adapt are using. Um, so I'll go into those, and at the end, Adrian's going to pop up, who you've already, already met, and he's actually going to put all that into the context of the ADAPT v EBDC. Okay? So, business requirements of a cloud solution. So, I hear lots of things from customers. These are the main ones, and these are the main ones I'm going to talk about today. It's around enterprise platforms, data being available, security, and services on demand, and also support models. Those are the things that... that, that organizations are generally um, looking for in a cloud platform. Um, so I'm going to dive into each one of these. So I'll start off with, I want my enterprise data to be on an enterprise platform. So organizations, your organizations, deal with data that's critical to their day-to-day -day running. And when you, I guess, when you go out and build your own infrastructure, you're looking for a, a best-of-breed solution, the, the best solution to put, how's your data on, with, and what, with, with cloud platforms, why would that be any different? You're still looking for that, that best of breed solution. Your organizations are looking for the reassurance that it's on a best of breed solution with the best practices in place uh, and the reassurance of vendor support behind it. So I want to introduce you really to my, the, the FlexPod, which is our best of breed platform. And it's come about with a, uh, a partnership between NetApp and Cisco primarily. Um, as you can see here, it uses NetApp and Cisco components for the physical infrastructure. So we've got the Cisco UCS series chassis and the Cisco Nexus switches. And also at the bottom, we've got our NetApp FAS technology. Now, the key thing around this is what we've done is we've, we've put together standard pre-validated designs. Um, so this means that we've worked with other vendors such as VMware or Microsoft or Citrix for those workloads. And there's about 23, 25 pre-validated designs um, to, to come up with the best solutions for those environments, those applications, those workloads. The other point around FlexPod is it's flexible. So one platform, but it, can skill, it can scale to fit many workloads. Um, and we can have mixed workloads on that, on that platform, which means that you can, it's, a, it's a great kind of foundation for a, for a service platform. And there are other different bits and pieces behind it, such as the support um, cooperative support that I'll talk about at the end of this presentation, and also the deployment and, and the sizing guide. So, well, as we've worked with um, application vendors, etc., such as Microsoft, etc., um, we've put together not only the, the design but also the deployment guide. So, when you're standing up services, you can do it in a, in a preset and, and, and pre validated way. So, where does this fit into a, a services platform? Now, this is a very busy slide, and I've intentionally made it. Um, I've kind of blurred it out, if you like. The key point here is, is, is for any service platform, the FlexPod really is, is the, the key building component. So in order for you to build that platform and then present those services, and you can present many services, and because you've got validated designs, et cetera, you can, you can stand up those services very, very quickly. Okay? So this brings me on to my next business requirement. I need services on demand. Um, we've talked about standing up services. Organizations are generally going to start off with certain workloads and then kind of add more workloads as we go along. So, so it really is around having a, a highly scalable infrastructure. Well, Flexible is a, flow, a, a flexible infrastructure, and it can, we can scale it in two ways. We can scale up and we can scale out. So scaling up really is around adding, adding to the existing environment, if you like. So if you take the example, I, I like, you like can tell I like Lego, right? Because it's been me ages doing this slide. What we're doing is we're essentially adding um, shelves to a, a storage controller, and we're scaling its performance and its capacity, OK? And we can add these shelves on the fly, so we can scale up a system. But there's going to be a point where 
but you can't scale it anymore. And that's where we start to scale out, okay? So we'll then scale out with another storage system, and likewise at the compute layer, we've scaled out with more UCS chassis, so that we can support more workloads. We've added capacity, we've added performance, we've added CPU, we've added memory, so we can scale out and put more workloads on these systems. So that means that, our, going back to our service infrastructure, with it being flexible pa powered, we can scale out and scale up the, the uh, physical infrastructure so that we can add more services or those services can be elastic and get bigger and get smaller if you want. But generally they'll get bigger and we can add more workloads onto the, onto the service platform. Okay. So, it's all very well. We've got this shared platform that's out there that's able to scale up and you're able to add more services and more, put more of your data on that. You also need it to be secure because what you don't want to do is put your data onto a shared platform and other people can see it. That's, that's a real big no-no, right? And traditionally, this has been a challenge and the way it's been um, addressed is by having dedicated silos, if you like. So you'd have dedicated storage, dedicated network, dedicated servers, and dedicated applications. But that's, that's great, but what that means is you're, 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 the cost is going up because you're, the resources you're putting in place for each individual one um, are forcing that cost up. So what we want is we want an end-to-end -end, um, solution. Okay, so we have a pre-validated design that we, we've uh, done with Cisco and VMware, which is around putting in place end-to-end -end isolation. So it's a secure multi-tenancy uh, validated design. So in this case, customer one can't see any of customer two's and customer three's data, and likewise, customer two can't see customer one's or customer three's. By having a shared platform that can support multi-tenancy, it means that you can increase the utilization of the assets with them and force costs down. Well, the technologies that we use at the, um, at the NetApp layer, we've got the multi-store product, and this is about um, creating virtual storage appliances within in the physical kit. Likewise, at the Cisco layer, we've got the, um, the Nexus 1000V plus the, the kind of things you would see, you know, like VLANs, etc. And up at the top there, we're using VMware and vShield zones, etc. So these are all put together in a pre-validated design um, and we've also done some certification against them. So there's PCI certification, and I've seen service providers do this kind of design in, a, in an IL-2 and an IL-3 environment. So that's great. We've, got, we've now got a shared platform that's scalable, and we're able to add ser services to it, and, we, and they're secure. But we want to make sure that when we put our data onto a cloud platform, it's available. So this is a, a slide of our product set, if you like, in terms of data protection. And um, what we've got up the side is we've got availability. And what that actually means, if you're going to do it yourself, it also means increased cost. Because if you get up to the very top, you've got the Metro cluster, which requires a, a, a bit more infrastructure than the normal um, FAS, FAS platforms. So we've got kind of local snapshots at this end, um, where we can do snapshots and snap restores. And then we go up and we go to the snap vault side of things, which is, which is around remote backups. And then if we've got data that requires disaster recover, recovery, we can use the snap mirror product for, the, for that, for replication from, from one data center to the other. And at the top of the tree, we've got um, Metro Cluster. Okay, and this is our continuously available solution. So it really is the belt and braces of, of, of availability. Now, being able to support all these different types of, of um, service levels or protection levels means that we can put different service levels in place. So we can have a bronze service level, so if you've got data that, yeah, you, you want to make sure that it's, it's backed up daily, but you, you're not too worried about it, you know, being, being there in a disaster, et cetera, then we'll go for the bronze level, you know, okay? But if there's data that you want to ensure that in a disaster it's available within a certain period of time, then the gold level might be more appropriate. And like at the very top, there's the platinum service level, which is around the metro cluster, which is what adapter have used. And, and, and this is about having data that's continuously available. 
Now, in my experience in the market, most service providers are, are operating in the bronze, silver, gold service level. To my knowledge, Adapt to the only service provider that, that, can, that are operating a flex pod, a metro cluster powered flex pod. That's a mouthful. So that means that they can operate at all these levels, which is great. 